Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. We're not going to start out with the NetDania chart this evening because there's actually some charts I'm going to cover on my blog when I do the blog roll that deal with the prices that we saw today. So instead we're going to start with Harvey Organ's site and I'm going to use that to pull some numbers of gold and silver futures and then I'm going to go to do some analysis about the volume that goes on in these. The reason why is because my latest video, a challenging Chilton, has been very controversial. A lot of people have come out and made comments about that it's inaccurate and that uh, the volume figures are inaccurate and things like that. So I want to just do a real simple mathematical breakdown, just pulling the numbers from Harvey Organ. So. Just grab some numbers here. Grabbed. I didn't do the open interest. I just grabbed the volume. You can see that he reports that he had a volume in gold of 165,000 contracts. We had a weak volume uh, in silver of 33,000 contracts. Uh, so a round up to 34. I think it's actually quite a bit more than that on a regular basis for silver. But we'll just use that just for those are the raw numbers. So what I did was I drew up a chart here, and I'm going to go through it real fast because I don't have a lot of time. Now, I'm going to save this and probably go do other commodities when I get the chance. But I just did gold, silver, and copper here, and you've got some columns. You got gold, silver, and copper. You got the number of ounces mined per year with copper, it's in tons. You got the contracts traded per day, and you can see that I just took uh, Harvey Organ uh, for gold and silver, and then I grabbed one for, uh, for copper off of uh, the COMEX site. The next one is ounces or tons per contract. Then to get that, uh, you multiply and, and then you get the ounces or tons traded per day. Then you get the ounces or tons traded per year. And then you get the ratio. So most people know the numbers with gold. There's 50 million ounces mined per year. There's 165,000 contracts traded per day. There's 100 ounces of gold per contract. That comes to 16.5 million ounces of gold traded per day. And that comes 3.3 billion. You got to multiply times 200 because there's 200 trading days. So that comes to 3.3 billion ounces of gold that is traded per year while there's a mined 50 million. That gives you a ratio of 66. So for every, and this is just the COMEX, this is not the LBME or the TOCOM, this is not the SLV, this is not all of these other things this is just looking at the COMEX course that's just what that's the only thing that Bart Chilton is responsible to regulate so that's why we're looking just at the COMEX so that's 66 times so for every one physical ounce of gold you have 66 paper ounces of gold trading now the math for the silver is similar you got 750 million ounces it's mined a year 34,000 contracts are traded a day 5,000 ounces are in the contract that gives you 170 million ounces traded per day, 34 billion ounces traded per year, and that's 45 times the amount of physical silver that's mined. So for every one ounce of physical silver, you've got 45 ounces of paper silver traded just on the COMEX alone. And that's just using yesterday's volume. It may be worse, it may be better. Now for copper, we're gonna do that in terms of comparison because if you remember the thing that I was challenging that Chilton said, was that, well, you've got to understand that it's roughly tenfold of paper that's traded for, uh, for the physical in any commodity. So we can see that's not the case in gold. That's not the case in silver. But let's look at copper here. We've got 15 million tons mined every year. We've got 40,000 contracts, and there's 12.5 tons in each contract. So we've got 500,000 tons traded per day in copper and that's a hundred million tons that is traded per year of copper but we mine about 15 million tons so that's about seven so that's very close to the figure that Chilton gave so the big question that stands out is why why is the amount of paper gold and paper silver so much higher than the amount that's mined every year. I think we already know the answer to that question because the P 
people who are manipulating the prices are using the paper to do it. Now, some people have said to me, that doesn't matter. You need to look at the, these things are changing hands. So I wanted to bring up a little, a little notepad here to do a comparison here. Now, this is going to be a billion ounces. Let's just say it's ounces, silver ounce. It doesn't matter. We've got a billion is the volume in all three of these, okay? The first one, we have one ounce, just one ounce of silver or gold that's traded a billion times in a day, okay? So our volume for that is a billion ounces. Now the next one we have a billion ounces that's traded once per day. And that's also a volume of a billion ounces. And the third one we have a thousand ounces that's traded 10,000 times per day. Now that's going to be a billion ounces as well. Now why did I bring this up? Well, because sometimes you have to approach the extremes to see how these things matter. So we can see in the first instance how ridiculous it is if you had one ounce of physical silver or gold that was traded a billion times per day, then you could safely say, well, that's not an accurate price setting mechanism because no one really has any. It's just a bunch of people playing a game. Similarly, on the second one, if you had a billion ounces and it was traded once per day, so one guy sold it to another guy on a price they agreed upon, that's not a market either. That's just two people agreeing on a price. Whereas the third alternative, if you had a thousand ounces trading 10,000 times per day, assuming that's going to be a bunch of different people, this is going to be the most likely to yield some kind of accurate price. So as you approach this extreme, you don't have a real market. And as you approach this extreme, you don't have a real market. So obviously you want something right in the middle. My argument is that when you take these paper ounces of gold and paper ounces of silver, you're already at 45 to one ratio just on the COMEX. Remember with silver, they only deliver 5%. Remember, the U.S. only mines 50 million or less, so you're going to have to multiply these numbers times 10 or 20, add in the SLV and all the other stuff. So you're going to be at hundreds then. So it's my contention that we are approaching this scenario. One ounce traded a billion times per day. In other words, we're getting towards the extreme of where it's a gigantic game of musical chairs. We've got about three chairs in the middle of the room and we've got a few hundred people dancing around waiting for the music to stop and they all expect to sit down in the chair. So that's my explanation of why it matters the volume of paper silver to and paper gold to physical silver and physical gold. It isn't 10 to 1 like Bart Chilton said. It's not anywhere close to what copper does and when I get the chance, I'm going to pull out corn and soybeans and everything, and I'll give the full list. It's a lot of math and research to do, but I suspect that the other commodities are going to be around between 5 to 20 or roughly 10, exactly what Chilton said. But for some strange reason, and we know what that is, gold and silver are more paper by far than physical. So let's jump over to the blog roll. It's actually going to be a reverse blog roll this time because... I'm, I have so many entries. I've set my page to load 40. If that does cause a problem, please let me know because I'm getting close to doing 30 and 40 a day now. But So I wanted it to load those on the first page. If that is a problem loading the page, let me know and I'll, I'll reduce that number down. So real quick blog roll. The first thing I did this morning was see the nice jump that we had in silver. And so I posted a chart from Annette Dania and I'll put a link below for that and you can see we had a nice breakout of the descending trend line and I said that we had to break the second one we did break through it and then that takes me to my next entry that I made was that at 8:30 and 9 30 respectively we got the expected smackdown that came out of New York. So you can see on this chart that I have made that I drew the trend, primary trend line, a secondary trend line, I did a downtrend line, and I did some top lines of where these 
highs were. You can see, as I was watching it very closely live, as 8.30 opened up, we had a nice little spike rally on some volume, and then immediate selling came in. This selling was kind of back and forth until about 9 o'clock, and then we started to decline, and right before the open of the equity indexes, we were just touching this support trend line, and right at 9.30, right after we opened up, boom, they smashed down through that line. So this is a rally that started at 3 to 3.30 a.m. Eastern time, which is going to be an Asian rally. And that was the title that I put on that blog entry, which is that Crimex forces overwhelm the Asian silver rally. So that's what happened today in the silver market. We're still waiting for it to get back to that high that it hit about 30 30. another article here that i covered obama's new chief of staff he received a nine hundred and fifty thousand dollar bonus when he was working for citibank this is just a few months after they were bailed out by the u.s government here they are paying bonuses so you can have a lot of confidence in obama's new chief of staff this is a chart that i posted this morning and this is a reaction to some of the people who have said that silver, especially Clive, that silver is in a head and shoulders. I do not see a head and shoulders here. I see a gigantic pennant forming. So we'll see. I also drew a descending trend line on the MACD. And my expectation is that when we break through that and through the zero line, we may have a significant rally. The next story is... The dollar vigilante that was posted. There's actually two dollar vigil vigilantes today. Excellent one on gold stocks. He agrees with me. Street name and all the rest of that stuff. It's it's not worth it. There's a chart that we looked at before. This is a new person that I started covering. Dave Janda. He does an excellent interview with both Bill Murphy and Ed Steer, and uh, it's the whole three hours. So it's really good. You want to listen to that. This is an article where NPR is actually covering the metals. I put a link here. You click the play button, it's, it embeds. We actually have some mainstream media coverage of silver and gold. This is uh, silver for a monetary collapse. Excellent uh, technical analysis. King World News interview about $2,000 gold and $150 to $300 silver. That would be amazing to see. Here's another one. Gold will average 20 or 2000 to 2500 that's from UBS how to prepare for the difficult years ahead and that's from the economic collapse blog this is an article it was in mainstream news that I pulled out it's how the Iran sanctions can backfire you can see this highlighted Russia has proposed to use the ruble with trade with them and you can see they've replaced the oil with the uh, trade with China India and Japan so very interesting that uh, this this thing is coming to a head. If you remember, a lot of what seemed to spur World War II was some of the trading issues between the United States and Japan. Um, Herbert Muhlman, who's a new up-and-coming guy uh, on YouTube, excellent analysis there. Here's another chart I did. This is on the weekly MACD, and what I'm trying to point out here is that we finally turned up. We actually have a rising red line on the MACD. This is the third time in this crash since the May SmackDown that we've had this rising line. You can see it failed in fairly dramatic fashion here at the September SmackDown. It also failed again right here in the December SmackDown. And it's now trying to rally. So we'll see if it can come up and meet the blue line crossover and head higher. The next article is about a catastrophic, how catastrophic it would be to have a breakup of the euro. Uh, there's an article about gold confiscation. This is an article about Generation Y. You should really look at that. I believe it's from Forbes. And you look here. These are, this is literally, these are true here. This is the scariest thing. Here's the top employers of the Generation Y. Armed Forces, Walmart, Starbucks, Target, Best Buy, McDonald's, Abercrombie and Fitch, YC, YMCA, CVS, and UPS. So there's your careers that are 
for your young people. The Love Trapezoid, interesting article about uh, the four corners of Beijing, Tehran, Tokyo, and Washington. Patriot Radio News Hour. Here's a Simon Black. Goes into very interesting information about the Argentinian collapse and what's going on there now. A TF Metals report, which is a study of open interest. This is an article I pulled from the news. It is about, uh, they brought this out, kind of a trial balloon they floated out there about how AIG is going to report great earnings. And uh, so I gave the story there, and you can read the story here. But what was even more interesting was the comments. Ten of ten comments that were there when I read them, every single one was something like what people who read this blog would say. So doesn't look like the people are fooled by, fooled by the fact that the government bailed out a company and then is now deciding to report record profits. The latest uh, Peter Schiff on the dollar's lucky streak. This is a video from a guy who actually was trying to go and search through some rolls of uh, halves at the bank, and the bank pretty much told him, well, there's not going to be any silver there. We don't have any rolls because we're searching them ourselves. Interesting. There's an interview from Arabian Money giving you a little view of precious metals in that part of the world. And an article from Casey Research, uh, why gold has been down. This is an article covering the hyperinflation that's coming to Iran because of the U.S. sanctions. And this is an article comparing the U.S. M2 versus China's M2, who did announce today that they're going to zoom the money supply as well. This one is uh, look for an end of the debt super cycle. This is more on the deflationary side. And this in this expose about green energy and the boondoggle there. This is one I pulled from the news, and they threw this up as a trial balloon. A couple of Fed, Fed heads, governors have announced that, well, they need to do more. So maybe this is a little early warning of a QE3. And the next one is about uh, consumer credit spending. You have to actually click on this. I didn't want to steal everything from the site because it's a very small article. So you have to click this link to see the chart. But basically, it's going to show you that credit has gone through the roof, uh, consumer credit has gone through the roof, and uh, savings has gone down the drain. So the next one is an interview with Jim Sinclair. And here's a video from someone who took my advice and went and picked up a monster box of the Cougars. I had another person who PM'd me that he picked up five boxes. I think he picked them up off a of Tolving. And so he probably got them for that 3150 a box, and I'm a little bit jealous on that. And here's the record sales of the U.S. Mint, where they sold over $4 million in the first, is it three days? And this happened last year, too, if I remember. The first few days of this year, they sold over $4 million. So silver is still rolling. It slowed down in the fall, and we thought it was going to fall off, but it was a record year. It looks like it's going to be a record year again this year. Technical indicators from uh, Turd Ferguson and the latest Dollar Vigilante. So that's the blog roll. Uh, I want to thank everybody who's visiting the blog. It's a lot easier for me to post technical things in the morning when the market opens up. It takes me hours to do a video. It takes me two minutes to grab a technical chart and put it up there. So... You can always see those if you either click on the RSS feed or if you just want to get a daily update by email, you can click there. Or if you want to follow on Twitter, everything I do is going to be tweeted so you'll get an idea when that happens. So that's the video for tonight. It's still very controversial, but I wanted to remind people that Neither extreme volume of small amounts of silver is an accurate measure of, of supply and demand, nor very low volume of high amounts, but something in the middle. And it's my conjecture, or my opinion, that we're approaching this one ounce traded a billion times per day, which is becoming a ridiculous game of musical chairs. Obviously, when the music stops, only people with physical silver are going to have anything. And we'll talk to you next time.